All right, now we're gonna do the really hard shit. And now for me to scream in agony. I'll say, I think this might be the hardest of the new worlds, I think. I, might, I remember this one being painful. This might be the castle I was thinking of, actually, that might be the worst of the game. I think. Yeah, it's, it's crazy in a Mario RPG renaissance, like... In less than a span I guess they, I guess they kinda got the message. Yep. In less than a span of 12 months. Like, 11 and a half months. We've had Super RPG Remake, Bowser Your Door Remake, Done by Intelligent Systems themselves, mind you. Yep. And done with, with good care, so they didn't fuck it up, which is nice. Yeah. And now a new Mario Luigi game that people assumed was dead. Like, they see that people want Mario RPGs, now I'm bringing it up full force. The big thing about a lot of these Mario RPGs is that a lot of them were shoved on the portable. Yup. I yep. mean, the ones that matter, to be fair. Yup. Sticker Star got thrown on 3DS and was... Ugh. Color Splash was a little better, but still... Ugh. And that was a console one, too. Yeah. And Origami King managed to be the best of what fans have called the False Trilogy. <laughs> yeah, the best of the worst. I told you, like, I already said this to you before. It's the best it's of Great like, Mario! <laughs> I just still like, like it's still called Big Mario, just because it's called Big Mario doesn't mean we have to like it. Yeah. I mean, there's a, reason, there's, a reason, like, there's a reason why I say I like the Mario and the Luigi series like, more. Like, Oregon King, to me, it feels like they did the most of what they could with that formula. Yeah. And the characters they had. The problem is, it's like, like I said before, like, that modern Paper Mario formula from... Sticker Star to Origami King. You uh, can't really do much with it. Man. Sticker Star had decent combat. It's just his inventory system was such a stupid idea. Yeah, I would... I mean, to be fair, a lot of that combat just followed suit from the original Paper Mario. Yeah, yeah, there, that's so. true. Yeah. The problem is that the mechanics of the game really make it seem counterintuitive. Yeah. Like, why would I fight enemies when the only thing I'm getting is money to buy items and resources that I can just find out in the field, which are more than likely better? It just seems very reductive. At least in Color Splash, you can level up your paint capacity. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, you did enough battles! Your paint upgraded to having more! Cool, so I can paint more of the environment more easily. That's... And to be fair... Thanks! Fair, <laughs> Origami King also kind of suffered the problem that... Uh, stickers are ahead, just the valley just gives you money, yeah. It just gives you money and you already find a lot of stickers out in the field anyway, so it just seems kind of counterintuitive. I mean, at that point it's you're... It's better in that game, to be fair, but that also... At least the battles were interesting. It's just... Yeah. At least, like, a third of the way through the game, they let you just basically skip the whole fucking puzzle element of organizing the enemies. Yeah. Because that could get old throughout the whole game. Yeah. I loved it for the bosses. But for it was good for the bosses, but for the actual... The standard encounters, it's a little... Eh. Yeah, for the... Like, doing it for every single standard encounter would get pretty... At least they though. gave you the skip option after, like, the first or second chapter, so... That was... I still liked it. I'd, I'd be willing to play it again. And yet, I'm going to torture myself and probably replay through Sticker Star before I get to yeah. fucking Paper Jam. <laughs> Honestly, like, I do want to try and at least finish Paper Jam, because I do like what I'm playing of it so mm -hmm. far. It's just, compared to the rest of the series... Once you just... get to the, the quest of having to hunt down the toads, do that scavenger hunt, that's where it starts to get noticeably bogged down. If you've done any of that yet. I've done a little bit of it. Yeah, they have, like, numerous areas that have that. That was a lot of the filler content. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, also, the gauntlets have, uh, ranks to them now. I do like the concept of the ranked, um, gauntlets. Honestly, I would prefer... Way to do all the bosses? Getting the best rank on that sucks. Especially because the last one's new. And since you don't know the boss, good luck getting the best rank on the first try. <laughs> You know, when, um, one of the thing, I would rather have the ranks than, um, the turn limit for some of them, especially when, in the case of something like, you know, the, uh, giant battles. Yeah, the giant battles having turn limits are also Paper Jam is the worst of the, uh, quote-unquote giant fights of the series. Yeah. They were okay, but definitely not as good as the previous two. Yeah. 
Then again, Dream Team is an enhanced from battles inside store, which I do think overall the giant battles are definitely better than Dream Team. So, considering what the name of the um, thing is, something tells me ship battles are going to be a pretty big deal for... Yeah, you, you can see in the artwork they have a ship and it looks like they launch out of it to get to other islands. It's interesting. Now, I'm also thinking, like, if they're going to be giant battles, it might be giant ship battles. Ooh. You know, if they bring that kind of shit back, I mean, if they stick with what worked for friggin' battles inside story onward, I... Yeah. If they went back to, like, pure basic Superstar Saga, though, I'd have to hope they'd have a little more in there. Yeah. Because the rest of the series make the first two feel bare bones. Then again, the first one makes the second one feel bare bones. Yeah. God. Besides, you can let your way to the end of the game really quickly in parts of time if you know what you're doing. I think we're just trying to find any reason to just kick parts of I, I don't like the game. I don't like the game. I don't hate it. It's just... Yeah. The weakest one of the bunch. Yeah. It's the most one and done of the series. Yeah, it's, that's the biggest like, thing Like, playthrough once, like, all right. I feel like I've, I've had my fill. Superstar Saga, you feel like you'd be flexible with the coffee bean thing. You at least want to, like, expand your stats beyond all legitimate reason. And you also have the uh, special items as well, if you want to go crazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Experiment with a lot of those. Artists of Time had nothing really unique, except for, I guess, experimenting with different badges, which, again, Superstar Saga also had. And then, Bowser's Inside Story onwards. At least they had things for, like, really testing you with the gauntlets, and they had a lot of minigames. Not to mention the fucking special move minigames. Yeah. Oh. Bowser's Inside Story, some of those were torture because of Bowser's. Yep. Oh. I don't remember which one gave me the most trouble. I think the bomb one. I can't remember if it was the bomb one or... Because you had to, like, place them all in just the right spot to hit Mount Broke in the back. Ugh. And you missed just one of them. You lost a life on that. It's like, Jesus Christ. And you, like, organize them all there in a short amount of time. Ugh. Magic Koopa one was also rough with drawing the lines quickly and accurately. Yeah. The touchscreen ones with, uh... The Koopa one also sucked! Actually, all of them sucked. I'm about to I mean, say, all like, of them sucked. Because all of them acquired <laughs> some touchscreen uh, precision. That's why my LP, I had a bonus episode dedicated to me failing all of them repeatedly. Yeah. It was 40 minutes. <laughs> it was that bad. And that was me cutting out shit, too. Man, there's only, like, two bad, like, Mario and Luigi ones. And even then, like, you say that they're bad, but... They weren't They bad, still man. fundamentally... They're fundamentally sound. Yeah. Just, you know... The spring helmet kind of stunk. Yeah. Because he had to basically just go on a marathon. Just running and hitting all the bubbles. The spring helmet was just kind of boring. More than anything else, it just took forever. Man, if you get all of them at that max rank, though, you get a good gear item, I think. You do, yeah. Actually, more than Luigi's, I don't think you do. I think you get a decent one, but you can buy better. With Bowser's, though, you get his best, uh, armor. That's the thing that makes it worse. Bowser's you want to do because you get him the best armor he gets in the game! Yep. God damn it. <laughs> ah, fast, pussy people! Oh, why are the piranha plants going in and out of these things so quickly? Yes! Oh! Only seven stages left to go. We're almost there. God. So much pain. I gotta remember all the things that showed up in the direct. Yeah. I gotta make sure there's nothing I missed. Oh, there's probably a lot that we missed, to be fair. Yeah, there probably is a lot. Oh, yeah, like I mentioned, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Not done by, um, Retro, thank God. It was, supposedly it's done by another company that was doing, uh... uh I forget, I forget they ported some other HD game on there. Okay, so on that's Switch. That's... I know people were rumoring it was, uh... Oh no, people were rumoring that friggin' the new Mario Luigi game was gonna be done by Ilka. This is like, no fucking way. The company that did the fucking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes? It's definitely not them. <laughs> Marvel Wars Capcom Fighting Collection. That should be fun. Dragon Quest Trilogy remake in HD 2D or whatever. Oh yeah, and uh, Switch Online. Hey, they got the Game Boy Advance version of Link, of, uh, Link to the Past. So you can do four swords through there. Yay. Nice easy way to do that now. 
Zero mission got on there. Nice. It's about time. Yeah, it took them long enough. And they finally introduced the the adult Nintendo 64 app. So a lot of the mature rated games have their own separate thing, because, you know, parental controls. Yep. Giving Perfect Dark and Turok. I was surprised Turok was on there, to be fair. Yeah. I also tried to play it again. I forgot the controls of that game are horrible. Oh my god. Also, you have a remastered version that's already on Switch. Why would you play it on the N64 online? Yeah, and I'm playing the uh, Steam version, so it's like it's even yeah. less value for me. Yeah. It just gives Conker's Bad Fur Day already. Come on. I mean, Conker for everybody else but me, because honestly. I, I mean, mean, I haven't played it to I'm be fair. I'm just saying but... it's more iconic for it to be on there. Yeah. It's the only rare title they don't have on there now. Well, other than DK64 and Diddy Kong Racing. You know what? Those two should come first. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> we should get DK64 and I, I don't give a shit what anyone says. I want DK64 first. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Donkey Kong Race gets... You know, for as much Race. as I love the uh, the Returns Renaissance that's kind of happening but slowly but surely, mm -hmm. I kind of want to see 3D DK. People are rumoring that there was going to be a new Donkey Kong game that was going to be like a 3D one that supposedly the Mario Aussie team was working on. That would be some sh that would actually be kind of interesting to see. Hey, guess what? We're not gonna give Mario a new uh, 3D uh, platformer. So now we're gonna give it to DK. I'm sure they got something coming brewing up for Switch too. Could be another reason they're potentially delaying it. Yeah. They said they wanted to have a lot of stock, like of Switch twos or whatever they're gonna be called before they go out into the wild. They also, well, they could be trying to get some big first party titles to come out immediately for us. People want to buy it right away, which is honestly a smart move to do. That freaking, yeah. you know, Xbox series and PlayStation 5 didn't really do. Oh, I forgot. PlayStation 5 had a freaking Demon Souls remake. How could you not want one at launch? Speaking of showcases, yo, Sony has, like, nothing going on for them right now, feels like. I will admit, though, they actually announced a game that would actually encourage me to get a PS5 for once. Astro Boy. Astro Bot, yup. It looks like a, you know, a freaking uh, Mario Galaxy, which is not a bad thing. And considering what a lot of Sony's games are, especially the first party lineup, that's the kind of variety they desperately need. Yeah. Especially considering they don't have a lot of a first party lineup at all this year. Like, like that's a game that actually looks like charming and fun. It's something I missed from seeing like almost anything from Sony or the PS4 era. I feel like almost nothing like that was there on PS4. And again, that's your Japanese Sony team for you. Yeah, because... They God, actually thought about being fun and colorful and... Actually, you know, giving variety. Because, God forbid, we want more genres than just yep. standard third-person walking. Yeah, everyone's looking soon. at all these other games that people were hoping Sony would announce, and then that came up, and people were like, that show sucked. If it was for Astro Bot, that would have been the worst Sony Direct we've ever seen. <laughs> like, man... And I'm not even sure what... Yeah, and then there's Microsoft, who... After the frigging Hi-Fi Rush axing that happened, like... It looks like so The rumors are, it sounds like somebody in management just wanted an excuse to ax them, say, you know, the Evil Within series didn't sell that well, and since Shinji Mikami left, he yeah. just gave an excuse. Even so, it's just like... I mean, yeah, after Hi-Fi Rush's success, you would've thought, I mean, Leadership change could be a reason people may think they want to have some oversight on it and, you know, make a decision that's good for the business. Especially considering it's like, hey, you just got a game that honestly could give Microsoft some variety and actual, you know, people wanting to be interested in looking yeah. into it. I and mean, then you pull something like that, it's like... I mean, yeah, I I, I, I try to take it more as just them. Shinji Mikami leaving just gave an excuse to get rid of it. Get rid of the company, as stupid as it was. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and justify it. That's basically all I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, they, they didn't show a lot. After that, it's like... I will like, admit, Microsoft Showcase did show a lot of good stuff. At least I thought. I think I haven't watched it, so I guess I don't really have much to say. Or to... I mean, the thing that excited have... me the most was uh, a new Gears of War game. It's a prequel. It looks like it might be going back to like the series roots of like horror and stuff and implemented as well. But you know, considering the route that the last two games went... It's nice to try to see them go back to basics and try to make it work like the magic it was for the original trilogy, so I'm excited for that. 
I never played much of the Gears of War games, so that's something that I guess you probably have more of. That was a project I had in my mind if you wanted to do Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Maybe I'll consider it. It was a thought in the back burner I had. Maybe and I'll put that in the back. Yeah, it's definitely a back burner thing. Especially for sure. since, technically, for the channel, me and Nordifer only went through two, and, no, and we never got to three. Then again, he's in Florida now, so. Yeah. Hope he's yeah. I'll say, Gears of War 3 is so good. That was like one of my favorite all-time shooters, Gears 3. Like, yeah, it, it was one of the games that definitely, like, perfectly, like, third-person cover shooter. Yeah. Just to be fair, though, when I think of, like, for the first shooter I'd probably consider doing, it's like, maybe doing 2016, because that's the first one to actually reinvigorate my interest in shooters again. Also true. Yep. Because... Oh, yeah, that was another big thing from the Microsoft conference. A new Doom. It basically put, like, Doom in the medieval age. <laughs> He's got weapons like a shield with like blades. A like, chainsaw shield, which is hilarious. Like, dude! That was the game of the show for Microsoft. Like, oh man. Like dude, that continues to be one of the best things they have. Oh my god. It looks so good. It keeps reminding me I need to go back and play Doom 16 and eventually Doom 2016. I have to. I have Eternal. I still need to play it. Oh. There is such good, like, unadulterated fun. Fuck you! <laughs> Rewind it! But uh, yeah, it's like I have Eternal, but it's just like... I have I have enough of a backlog as it is on Steam. Just the intensity got me out of it the first time, and then I realized I couldn't find all the secrets. It just got me out of it, and I wanted to think about going back to it later. I just never did. I have to get back to it soon. I really should. It's, it's one of those series... Right? It's one of those series I regret I haven't played. Oh, they're short you can never fuck you. <laughs> like, oh, it just looks so, such pure fun. But that's just a raw dog shooter. Uh huh. They gave us a look at the Perfect Dark reboot, which it feels like a bit of Mirror's Edge a little bit, along with a. Uh, I think it's being done by the team that did all uh, the Lara Croft reboot games. I think. Or at least they made it. How oh, that fuck you! I do wonder how that would look, because I know the reboot has come to more mixed reception over the years. Yeah. Oh, uh, Perfect Dark Zero, yeah, a lot of people don't, aren't the biggest fan of that one, but an actual, another reboot, it's... And I was talking about the uh, Tomb Raider reboots. Oh, yeah. Because they basically just... First and third, I thought people said were pretty freaking good. It's the second one people didn't really like. Another big thing that's also been a point of contention in recent years for Tomb Raider specifically is just seeing how they basically try to make yes, um, Laura Croft quote unquote label by basically abusing the absolute hell out of her and just making her. Yeah, I was just saying it's something I oh yeah, so I saw him second win. One of the things Yahtzee said basically like all these things like female protagonists for some reason like put them in the victim role. Yeah, all of the main characters it's victimizing it's like, them. It's like weird. Why don't a lot of male characters go through this? It's, fucking bizarre. And he was like, it's probably because a lot of game developers are still male-focused, so... Yeah. They just happen to put women in the victim spot just because it's what they're used to doing. Which is dumb, which is a dumb logic to have because we have seen cool female protagonists before. I mean, yeah. hell, one of them was freaking Laura Croft in the old school. They didn't victimize her at all. Yep. They objectified her, probably, but in terms of, you know, character... She probably had way more interesting character because she was always confident. Yeah. Yeah, that she was. Do you recognize this castle, by the way? Is this a maze? No. I say... How about Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't do that! I have my ways. Remember I told you about how shitty this trap is? Note they started putting blocks in the corners. Hmm. So you can still run through this and hang out that other corner. It's the next one. This is what I was worried about. Mm. Yup, you gotta run through perfectly. This is gonna be a painful one. Zip, it's World Sounds Castle, except they made that segment harder. And they added a few more fire bars. This could very well be the worst spot for you, maybe. Cause you gotta figure out the timing for that fucking perfectly. Yeah, I think another thing that happened in the Microsoft Conference, you gotta look at the Indiana Jones game. How does that look? They showed a cutscene that shows a lot of, you know, 
Indiana Jones, you know, campiness and writing and all that. It, it feels like an Indiana Jones experience, but they show the cutscenes. They showed a little gameplay clip at the end. Some it does look cool. Whether well, you can jump at people and punch them in the face and knock them out or steal their weapon. It does look kind of neat. And again, it's machine gun games or machine hand, whatever they're called. But yeah, they, they know their gameplay for us, so that could be fun. Reveal I want an Indiana Jones experience that's better than the fucking movies have been. Then again, anything George Lucas, or... I was well, not George Lucas, but Lucas Films has done in recent years has just been... Basically yeah. Kathleen Kenified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put a chick in it, make her lame and gay. Or something yep. like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the cutscene thing they showed did feel genuine. Oh, you almost had it right there. When you figure out the sweet spot, you just gotta jump with it just the right time on your way out. <laughs> yup, it's just timing it perfectly. Yeah, that looks good. They finally showed footage of the Fable reboot that people have been waiting for as well. Or new Fable game, whatever it is. Oh! Yup, that's gonna be a tough one. You know, a lot of people expect me to be raging at this, but is there a part- is there- how sick would it be if I said there's a part of me that actually kind of enjoys this? <laughs> Why is there some sort of catharsis you're getting from this, you monster? Oh, we're so close! God damn you, Claire Claire! This is the time! Oh, uh, nope, now the hammer's in the way. Damn it. Oh! Damn it. Fucking, I hate this Bowser! Well, this is the worst Bowser, I think. I think the one in the last castle is also pretty bad, but it doesn't have a fire bar. I don't think. I'm pretty sure this is the worst one. Uh, Castle C4, you suck! We should get, grab some C4 and blow this fucking place up! If only that was a secret, you just blow up the fucking castle. <laughs> Oh, that's Luigi on the outside where he's just got so It's crazy. always a C4! Oh god! Wait, I'm still in! <laughs> At least let me get the one up before you do it! Okay, I got the one up. You can blow it up now. Wait, what? There's not a little bunch, guys! Is that the man who sends out fucking war machines to kill us? I mean, nothing else has stopped you! Yeah, and? You think that will? Then why are you complaining? It's inconvenient. <laughs> it's a hassle. That's all? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just annoying. It's just a hassle. <sighs> damn it. I think it was an opportunity, but then the fucking fireball gets in the way of it. God damn it. How many hammers does he fucking have in there anyway? Yes! <laughs> Finally! That was like over 40 minutes, I think. God damn it. Hey, you are! I'm the fuck out of here! Now that your peach is really stored! I fucking hate you guys so much right now. 